Good morning, my name's Mark Stanford. I'm vicar of Holy Trinity Church in Formby and St Michael and All Angels in Altcar. You are joining us for Wednesday morning's daily reflection. We're going to hear in a while from uh, the book of Ezekiel, but first a prayer after Lancelot Andrews. Blessed are you, creator of all. To you be glory and praise forever. As your dawn renews the face of the earth, bringing light and life to all creation, may we rejoice in this day you have made. As we wake refreshed from the depths of sleep, open our eyes to behold your presence and strengthen our hands to do your will, that the world may rejoice and give you praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God for ever. And now some words from Psalm 110. The Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. May the Lord stretch forth the scepter of your power, rule from Zion in the midst of your enemies. Noble are you on this day of your birth, on the holy mountain, from the womb of the dawn, the dew of your new birth is upon you. The lawn has sworn and will not retract. You are a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. The king at your right hand, O Lord, shall smite down kings in the day of his wrath. In all his majesty, he shall judge among the nations, smiting heads over all the wide earth. He shall drink from the brook beside the way. Therefore shall he lift his head. Well, for the last 2,000 years, the church has seen in this ancient psalm, Jesus, the risen, ascended Jesus, victorious. And so we are going to pray. Lord Jesus, divine son and eternal priest, inspire us with the confidence of your final conquest over evil and grant that daily on our way, we may drink of the brook of your eternal life and so find courage against all adversities for your mercy's sake. Amen. Well, the lectionary's taken us to the book of Ezekiel. Ezekiel was trained to be a priest. He's a Levite, but he's been dragged to Babylon and the temple is far away. And suddenly he's discovering a new vocation to be a prophet to the people of Israel. And so we pick up Ezekiel in chapter 2, beginning at verse 3. He said to me, mortal, I am sending you to the people of Israel, to a nation of rebels who have rebelled against me. They and their ancestors have transgressed against me to this very day. The descendants are impudent and stubborn. I am sending you to them and you shall say to them, Thus says the Lord God, whether they hear or refuse to hear, for they are a rebellious house. They shall know that there has been a prophet among them. And you, O mortal, do not be afraid of them and do not be afraid of their words. Though briars and thorns surround you and you live among scorpions, do not be afraid of their words and do not be dismayed at their looks for they are a rebellious house. You shall, you shall speak my words to them, whether they hear or refuse to hear. For they are a rebellious house. But you mortal, hear what I say to you. Do not be rebellious like that rebellious house. Open your mouth and eat what I give you. I looked and a hand was stretched out to me and a written scroll was in it. He spread it before me. It had writing on the front and back, and written on it were words of lamentation and mourning and woe. He said to me, O mortal, eat what is offered to you, eat this scroll and go, speak to the house of Israel. So I opened my mouth, and he gave me the scroll to eat. He said to me, Mortal, eat this scroll that I give you, and fill your stomach with it. Then I ate it, and in my mouth it was as sweet as honey. He said to me, mortal, go to the house of Israel and speak my very words to them. For you are not sent to a people of obscure speech and difficult language, but to the house of Israel. Not to many peoples of obscure speech and difficult language, 
whose words you cannot understand. Surely if I sent you to them, they would listen to you. But the house of Israel will not listen to you, for they are not willing to listen to me. Because all the house of Israel have a hard forehead and a stubborn heart. See, I have made your face hard against their faces, and your forehead hard against their foreheads. Like the hardest stone, harder than flint, I have made your forehead. Do not fear them or dis be dismayed at their looks, for they are a rebellious house. He said to me, Mortal, all my words that I shall speak to you, receive in your heart and hear them with your ears. Then go to the exiles, to your people, and speak to them. Say to them, Thus says the Lord God, whether they hear or refuse to hear. Well, it's a tough task that Ezekiel has been given. The remnant of Israel now in Babylon, battered, scared, that they are refugees in the worst sense. And yet they're still hard hearted. God knows that. And Ezekiel's called to speak words of lamentation and woe and judgment over them. But as the book, as we read Ezekiel, as it opens up to us, um, what we discover is that Ezekiel will be called to speak words of restoration and hope too. It's as if the people of Israel need to realise that they have really hit rock bottom before God can pick them up. And so at the beginning of the book, Ezekiel is given this tough task, speak truth, speak truth. And that's a, a tough thing to do. So as I read this passage, it speaks to me of a couple of things. Ask a couple of questions of me. Do I have a hard forehead? Wow, that's a powerful metaphor. Alongside a stubborn heart. Are there things God's speaking into my life that I'm refusing to hear at the moment? And then there's uh, the sweetness of the scroll. Uh, actually, Ezekiel, as he finds himself in this new vocation, not one that he'd expected or asked for, but the vocation of prophet, he discovers mm -hmm. that actually there's something about God's word in his life that is sweet to the soul. And, yeah, after 50-so years of reading this book, is it still sweet to my soul? There are days, of course, when it is, and there are days when it, it sometimes washes over me. And so uh, my prayer for today, for all of us, is that God's word for us today would indeed be as sweet as honey. So let us uh, pray now. I'm going to use the prayer for the week to finish off today's reflection. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of the church is governed and sanctified, hear our prayer, which we offer for all your faithful people, that in their vocation and ministry they may serve you in holiness and truth to the glory of your name, through our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, I hope you have a great day. God bless. May the Lord Jesus bless you and keep you and make his face shine on you, now and always. Amen.